We'll see if we can climb back into it today as we kick off game number one with the Tigers on the blue side. Yeah, Coco obviously a very good victor as well. So I'm yeah. just wondering where that ban is going to fall here. I think that's very smart of the Tigers to ban that Sivir. Uh, you should be, KT fell to CJ Entis with the Jinx in that final third game, but it was extraordinarily close. So maybe you're not so worried about that. If you feel that you can get the right flank engages off, Callista not going to be played by Prey, of course. And there is the new new. So Ooh, okay. trying to shut down some of their compositions. I like this. Yeah. Uh, CJ has been really reliant on the new new for their late game play. There's the Victor ban. Yeah, I mean, considering that CJ is on the red side this time around in the first game, I think the Victor ban is smart here. The coup, especially given the other bans, I think the Tigers would have first picked that if it was open, uh, if they, you know, if they had any plans of playing it at all. And then the Sejuani ban, really banning out the team fight and team oriented compositions from the jungle. I think this is smart, just as a test for CJ Entis. Now, do you ban the Gragas here? Because we already have two jungle bans from the Tigers, but Tigers are probably going to first pick Rek'Sai or Gragas regardless of what this final ban is from CJ Entis. You can see they're taking a lot of time. Do they want to ban one out or leave them both up so at least they get one of them here? Uh, well, that said, Ambition has played Lee Sin very exactly. well. Exactly, yeah, I was wondering that. Now, in that case, what would be the better matchup? But they're actually going to ban out the LeBlanc. Don't want to take any chances there either, and I think that's fair. And so the Alistair being picked up first. Because both junglers are available, that's going to decrease the priority on those pickups, even though Grog is generally considered stronger because he does have more impact in the late game. And probably that Azir going to be locked in, considering both Coco and Kuro have been playing a lot of Azir in their last matches. Yeah, it's a good pickup for Coco. It's a good takeaway from Kuro. Now the Alistair has been really popular these days just because you have so much disengage. And at the same time, if you have a lead, you can just flash in and get that five-man engage you want. Okay, so Evelyn is going to be the take here from Hojin. Uh, he has played it in his last two games back to back. He's been all right on it, nothing too spectacular. And then Prey, going back to Corky, just one of his tried and true picks. Yeah, Evelyn just doesn't, I still don't really agree with Hojin playing Evelyn because again, Hojin's not known for a lot of early game aggression. Evelyn has that advantage, even if you don't get kills just by applying so much pressure. But if you figure out that the enemy jungle isn't even trying to put on pressure, you're not too worried even if you don't see that Evelyn. Meanwhile, Shy, the legendary Jax of Season 2. Hovering over that one, probably will not see it. Vayne being highlighted by Space, still pretty eager uh, to get more wins on that champion. And although the first time we were disappointed as always, he's stepped it up afterwards. Yeah, he, he definitely has. Well, John of Vayne, going to be the lock-in here. So it looks like CJ just may want to dodge this situation, depending yeah, they, they should want to get out of this lane and go ahead and lane swap here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in Season 3 and early Season 4, a lot of the pros in Korea were just arguing that, you know, Janna Vayne, definitely one of the most surprisingly strong duos uh, that you can do a lot with. But on the other side, you have Alistair, and I think that's the big kicker here. It's like, what are you really going to do there? You can disengage if you want. The Lulu would be quite risky. We could see Ooh. an Ash coming in with an AP Corky in the mid lane. That would not necessarily be a bad thing. Cassiopeia also for that even matchup. And they need, they do need a little bit more scaling. Obviously, Lulu with a Corky comp would be rather yeah. problematic if you went past 30 minutes without a very large advantage. So that's going to help balance things out for them, taking that Cassiopeia. And a heavy magic damage composition from the Tigers. Yeah, that is... that is. Gonna, that might be hard to deal with for yeah. them. And they're gonna, they may go for the Hecarim just to try and get on top of the Cassiopeia. Maokai also available if they want that big tanky front line. Frankly, I'd go with Maokai here yeah. just so you have a big front line to deal with the Vayne. It's one more option to peel for the Vayne. They've got a lot of disengage. And this is really going to come down to Hojin's ability to flank because and have them blow a lot of crowd control on him because they've got so much disengage on CJ. Yes. So much. Yeah, you, I mean, everyone's ult's pretty much just going to allow them uh, to get away from the fight. I do like the Malachi. I agree with you. It's also nice against the magic damage. It's a more guaranteed front line. Sure, I mean, Shai's played Mundo in the past, even off meta, but when Malachi's available, why not? You have that secure CC, and your ultimate's going to help the Vayne and the Azir, too, should they get caught first. Well, this is a lot of opportunities for space right here, and considering that CJ has prioritized this Vayne, even if Space isn't the most spectacular Vayne player personally. The Grog is always helping with him, getting those single targets, and 
Wow, they have so much appeal for a space. They do. He should have a ton of room to maneuver right here. And I'm not sure about this composition against CJ from the Tigers, just because it's going to be really hard for them to engage on CJ. They're, they're going to be very reliant on Corky Poke before they open up a fight. Uh, not a lot of counter poke here. Uh, the only thing really from the Azir. Yeah. So this is this is really dependent on Prey's ability to position well and to get a lot of damage down before team fights start. And I don't know if I gamble on that with the Tigers and with Prey in their current form. I would feel much more comfortable uh, relying on Smeb and Kuro than I would Prey this season. Yeah, it's gonna look a little iffy. And even if he does get some poke down, you're still gonna need some really big plays from the Cassiopeia, the Evelyn, or even the Alistair in terms of team initiates. So we will be jumping into game one to find out how it all plays out on paper. CJ just seems to have a slight edge in the picks and bands. Maybe they bleed it up. Let's find out how it plays out though in game number one. Tigers and CJ Entis in this best of three is the round robin stages of the regular season of summer here at Champions in OGN. So we are going to see the amp tome start from Smeb here, so a little bit more of an aggressive option. He's going to just hit the brush at the beginning. Mad Life just going to walk right in. Of course, it will be Flame Spitter first, so no harpoons. He's going to get roasted a little bit. Yeah, Mad Life got the auto on. His side, so he got some extra gold. Pretty sure he's content with that. You know, space gonna take an unnecessary hit uh, as he tries to run away. But everybody loves poison, children. <laughs> Ambition, uh, rocking the fanatic skin. No, <laughs> was he? I didn't catch that. <laughs> fanatic Gragas skin. Ambition used to love playing the Oktoberfest Gragas. I remember, but it's to troll his teammates who didn't win a world championship. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Going in on Shy and Mad Life with skin selection. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just uh, looks like we are going to have standard lanes here. This should be pretty nice for the Koo Tigers. They did see Rumble up in the top side, so they're going to know in advance. And now Shy is going to spin in circles. It's not Christmas time, though, Shy. <laughs> he, just, he, he just wants to be. Shy loves presents. He loves presents. This is a message to the coaching staff with CJ. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shine just gonna quietly get those wolves and then he'll head over to the top lane. And it looks like we're gonna just get the 2v2 at the bottom. And Smep's rumble also just fine. So this is gonna I, this could turn out to be a little bit tougher in the early phases for Shy if things go a little wrong, but uh, that really depends on Hojin. Does Hojin show up at all in the top lane? Shy taking a long time to get up to lane. He's going to miss some of this CS, actually. This may not be the best idea. What uh, is this plan that they're going for right now? I'm sure Smeb is extremely confused at the moment. Yeah. They're, they may just try and gank mid two players right now, but this is costing Shy quite oh, a bit in terms of minions. <laughs> and if Kuro's smart, he's going to be sitting under his turret right now because this is a dangerous situation to be in. We'll see how far behind he actually ends up being in experience. He is going to catch the second wave, but did lose about half a one into the tower. Yeah, I mean, the other big thing here is that you also lost it on the advantage you got from getting the wolves. So it, you really missed out on a lot from setting that up. Uh, if the mid lane was their goal, I think, you know, Shy trailing down to the river, even then you kind of should have seen where the lane was ending up. Well, he said it wasn't going to work out. He slowed down the jungler too because he took he shared XP on yeah. the blue buff. So now we have Hojin with a level advantage trying to take out the scuttle crab right here. He may be a little bit too afraid to invade though because he's on the top side of the map. Smep just relentlessly pushing forward into this Maokai right now. Looks like it's not going to be too big of an impact. Well, actually, he's already up 13 CS. Yeah, it's going to start to make a bigger impact later on. And again, uh, it can matter a lot more if a gank comes through from Hojin. But Hojin not looking for that just yet. Again, just in terms of player style, a Hojin not the super early aggressive player. But now and then you'll see that synergy between him and Smep. Yeah, Prey not taking too much of an edge here in the lane yet. Actually behind in CS at the moment. 
But he needs to look to really punish this Vayne pickup as much as he can because another way that the Tigers can win this game is just by shoving this lane in and methodically pressuring with this Corky to take out that outer ring of turrets uh, after he hits six. So this is a, it's a situation where the Tigers, I, I feel they, they have to have things go their way because any kind of late game that you imagine between these two compositions is going to be in CJ's favor. Yeah, and Hojin here in the bottom lane. Now the Tigers kind of pushed space back for a little bit and then froze the lane as it now comes up. There's the flash headbutt backwards for space and he's going to tumble out of it, but the Ignite's already on him. The damage comes in, but he wants to get the kill on Debris. He almost does with the silver bolts, but can't get it. In. And he goes down as Madlife just had to back out and watch from afar. Yeah, they didn't expect that gank either. Hojin coming back into lane, does have that chilling smite now and does help to pick up that kill. Goes on to Gorilla, but uh, very good reaction from Space actually. Prey not using his flash there though, so they also got a summoner advantage. Yeah, but given given the situation, I do want to commend Space for the decision he chose yeah. to make. I mean, we Split used to second. not see that at, from him at all. I think that's a really good point about Space's development as a player, is that he would have been afraid to be that aggressive in that situation and at least try to counteract the all-in and pick up a kill. Yeah. Would he have the opportunity there, looking very decisive and nearly grabbing one. Ray Valking out and allowing his support and jungler just to clean up the mess in the bottom lane, but a successful gank. And that's going to start setting Vayne perhaps a little bit behind, although still goes back, gets the Vamp Scepter. No kill means no phage for Prey. Yeah, I mean, but here the bigger threat here is that Gorilla now level 3 going to level 4. He'll always kind of have that combination available. Sure, no flash, but Space is still going to be worried about getting caught and just taking a ton of bursts for Prey as we go forward. In a little fight. Malai's going to get caught by Hojin. There's the Howling Gale. He still TP. gets slow, but here's the TP oh. coming in. Ahead, but away. The combo not coming out for Gorilla. And that means Smeb's teleport now not getting the kill. They have to make something out of this. They have They're to take Dragon. The dragon. They have to take Dragon now, or else that is going to be really horrible for them. And again, yeah, mission is here. this Dragon does more damage early on right now. They didn't even get damage onto Mad Life because the combo was messed up by Gorilla, not getting the knock up at the end instead of just shoving him back. And so they're going to try and make the most out of this. Kuro now here taking out a ward, but Mad Life gets a deep ward, or not Mad Life, excuse me, Shy gets a deep ward into the top side as he forces Smep to lose some CS. And now there's going to be a TP advantage for Shy also to set up perhaps a kill in the bottom lane right here. Space just taking a <laughs> headbutt, pulverize auto attack, uh -oh. and Ojin. Ojin has caught no flash on this guy, and Emission's just going to put a ton of damage onto him. He just needs one more barrel, and he can't find the angle as Smep and Gorilla show up. Tears of Teleport coming in from Shy. Ambition gets one more buy some. There's Alan Gale and the shield from Mad Life. Ambition just flashes out to buy himself some more time as Prey gets caught by Space, and there's the equalizer right onto Shy and Coco. Coco has to flash out. A double kill for Kuro. Meanwhile, on the bottom, Space does get the 1v1 win as Smeb is now caught in the pit. No flash there. Howling Gale, this dragon pit is the pit of doom as Space picks up a double kill. I don't even know how that got set up right there with Hojin <laughs> sticking around in the dragon pit. Ambition must have corralled him in there. Space now bouncing right back into this one, getting a kill onto Prey just in a 1v1 duel on the side. Not the place you want to be as a Corky this early on in the game against a Vayne. And he got condemned, kind of got himself condemned into the wall actually. Prey, I think, was trying to flash into the pit, but Space managed to hit the Condemn. Prey actually dies with his flash still up. That double kill onto Cassiopeia, though, for Kuro, no less threatening in terms of late game damage, but I would rather, I'd rather be CJ in this situation, honestly. Yeah, I think they're okay with how things turned out, especially because, I mean, the Tigers were kind of forced to take a very minor advantage with that Dragon, and then CJ ended up evening out in terms of kills, and Vayne got the kills she needed, Cassiopeia, even if she doesn't get the kill, she's always going to be able to farm up just fine anyway. So I agree with what you're saying, Monty. As we see Smep back in the top lane, he does have that haunting, guys. Yeah, it's not only that. It's the fact that if we look at how these team fights are likely to play out in the late game, Cassiopeia is going to have a really hard time getting damage down because of the copious disengage from CJ Entis. On the other hand, Vayne has so much protection and so much freedom with all of these disruptive abilities that yeah. CJ Antis is running, that the Vayne's DPS is going to be a lot easier to come by in a 5v5 team fight in the late game. So just those kills, I think, have more value onto Vayne 
when we talk about how these two compositions will be going at each other. Very true, on both sides, it'll be really important for both teams to stagger their abilities very carefully, and CJ's been very famous for that even since season two, granted a slightly different lineup, but we'll see how that plays out as we go into the later portion of the game, probably around 30 minutes or afterwards, we're bound to see just team fight after team fight happen. Space being left alone on the bottom lane. Now, the Tigers saw Janna up top, so they're just hiding, and they know that Space has to play passively on his own. You should know there's a ward there as well, and they are going to start the blue buff immediately after the ward dies. They should have seen Maokai leaving the top side yeah. and placing that deep ward in, so that's a very good timing there from Hojin. And they will know that the blue is being done. Of course, there's the ping on the Cassiopeia. He's going to collect no dragon to be taken, but they are going to potentially try and four-man the bottom side Well, they know where the jungler and the mid laner are. Ambition still looking around here, but it looks like nothing going to come of it. Ray is six right now, starting to... Oh, oh Ambition's coming go. in. He wasn't seen by the Scuttle Crab, and Ray's going to get knocked up by the Alien Gale. There's the Ignite of the Explosive Cast, but the Flash comes out as it wasn't used just yet. Gorilla gets caught. He's going to be condemned. But with his ultimate, he's not taking too much damage. Space still trying to make something work with the true damage from the Silver Bows, but it's not enough. They have to back out. Now, Prey surviving because he had that flash, saw Ambition tossing the cask out, and not really a potential for CJ to get a kill after that. Of course, heal and flash still uh -oh, up. Oh, and the lane. equalizer. Shine, no escape. He actually has to just go forward, and he can't get the knockback onto Smeb in time, and Smeb will just walk out of tower range after taking two hits. Yeah, that early dragon is helping the Tigers so much because they have. They're not afraid of the counter dragon being taken by CJ on the bottom side of the map right now, so they have a lot of freedom to go ahead and try and snowball this rumble in the top side. And Shy's bounced back because of that earlier teleport, especially from Smeb, uh, down to the bottom side for the attempted kill on the Mad Life and then the Dragon. So he was able to deny some CS and get some more of his own during that time period. But now Smeb comes back to lane. Looks like he wants to potentially go for a very early Void Staff here. Oh, wow. Well, it'll really burn people down with that Equalizer and you know, maybe just trying to front load that damage so that they have some more run, uh, resemblance of a mid-game spike and not relying just on Corky. And right now, Space, now he's been struggling a bit in terms of CS, especially with that roam coming in from Mad Life. Of course, that double kill is helping him stay in the game. And, you know, with Vayne at 11 minutes, you're not too concerned as long as you haven't been completely shut down. No, he's going to be pretty happy with his amount of sustain and the near finish of a Blade of a Ruin King here this early on. He's doing absolutely just fine. Prey, not only that single assist and a slight CS lead, but Space should have a little bit more money overall. We saw Hojin just dancing around the bottom side of the map. See some things going down from CJ also, so they have some tabs on where he was last. Ambition just gonna walk forward. He's not gonna find Hojin though, so he puts down a pink ward. We'll clear the ward and we'll get tabs on Hojin one more time until at least that pink ward is gonna be cleared by the Tigers at some point, I assume. And Ambition now just pressuring Hojin when he knows the enemy mid laner is gone just trying to make sure that he can get some more extra uh, vision. Yeah, he's coming from behind right now. Let's see if he takes out this pink ward, although it's this would be, be a 3v3. I don't know about this one. Ooh, Looks like they're right. going to get it just barely. The bot lane from the Koo Tigers doesn't react quite in time. Yeah, and I think uh, when you're, if you're going to show up at the same time, the danger there was also that you had so many walls around you with the explosive cask. Space really could have gotten some easy kills if they started the fight wrong. So the Tigers just giving up that pink board. I mean, they can set up more vision soon after. While Kuro now with the Abyssal Scepter, top of the tier. Yeah, he's going to be feeling very comfortable in lane at the moment. And he, as he goes to get some vision on the brush with his poison. Hojin gets a ward cleared with that Raptor buff, looks like, before wandering out of lane. So they at least have eyes on him and can keep track from the bottom side of the map. Now Prey is backing off right now. Tiger's wanting to recall, I guess. Girl's just going to recall <laughs> within the... Yeah, well, it's, he's making them scared, actually. Yeah. Now... They see him go back, and so CJ's just like, all right, what's going on? They're waiting because the dragon is up. 
Now CJ thought right there, because Gorilla walked through the ward and then walked into his own pink ward where they knew there wasn't vision and recalled, uh -huh. he actually held two members of CJ there for quite a long time while Hojin was doing the red buff unbeknownst to CJ. Yeah, I guess CJ yeah, wouldn't have had the vision so they, actual they, recall. He actually just wasted their time a little bit, thinking that there was going to be some sort of gank between him and Hojin in the mid lane when they were just farming up in the jungle. A well, little bit of mind games going on from Gorilla. Yeah, I mean, very well done, especially because that allows the Tigers to get what they want on the times they want, and also without the risk of the dragon being taken right under their nose. So we're just trying to push back, but this is just going to continuously be a push fest in the mid lane until someone comes to help, or we see the next dragon fight. Now, both top laners have their teleports available. The Vision Wars just constantly going back and forth, and it's really going to matter just one of these times someone's going to change the tempo a little bit on when they go back after clearing the vision. Yeah, I, if I was CJ, though, I'm happy if this dragon just continues not being taken by the Koo Tigers because I don't want to fight them right uh -oh. now. Oh, uh, they can get poked so easily by this Corky. Yeah, they got a lot of damage down onto it now, though, so it's a little dangerous. The Pelper coming in first for Shy right in the thick of things, but Mad Life can get a lot of damage in space is on top of the Equalizer. He gets caught by Kuro and the Equalizer. Mad Life has to jump away as Kuro gets another kill. Prey gets the third, and Coco has to put down the Emperor's Divide to help Shy escape. But what a disaster for CJ Entis as Smev comes in for another, and Shy has to flash out at least denying the ace, but that is no consolation prize. Let's talk about power spikes, Jobra. <laughs> so Prey has a Trinity Force now, and Kuro just completed that Abyssal Scepter. They have a rumble. There is a ridiculous amount of magic penetration right now with that Abyssal Scepter going across everyone uh, for the Ku Tigers. CJ Entis not really prepared for that, and even though it looks good, uh, Gorilla gets condemned backwards, but still manages to hit the Pulverize onto space. And then Prey, look how much damage he's dealing with his Trinity Force. Shy against this magic composition does have some MR in the form of that Cowl, but it's just not enough to deal with the kind of poke that's coming out. Trying to fight a Corky and a Rumble at this time is disastrous. And because Kuro has itemized in a way to increase those two champions' power spikes even further, super dangerous to go for that. You just want to keep denying it as long as possible if you're CJ, not get in a, a situation where this dragon has already chipped you a little bit, and then this Corky's able just to shoot one billion rockets into <laughs> you from the side. And now, Smeb going for the Rylize, actually. A Void Staff would have been weird this early without yeah. uh, so much magic resistance, which is why it was a bit cur curious. But now we can see picking up the the Rylize instead. So that's going to help slow people down. And again, they need that engage uh, because of all the disengage from CJ. So that's really going to help out, as well as give Kuro some more time to attack single targets. Yeah, well... Smeb, and especially after that one, and when he finishes Landry's, that's just gonna make his flame spitter burn so much more. So Smeb in a really good spot, and after that dragon fight, really everyone on the Tigers. That last fight too, all Coco had was a Morello Namacon. Mm -hmm. That's not anywhere near the power of the Cassiopeia, but it's just the synergy of the itemization that the Tigers had, as well as their champion power spikes, made that a very poor idea for CJ Entis. And now I mean, they traded for what, four for zero right there. Pretty disastrous fight, also ended up losing the Dragon, and now with this kind of def deficit, they are going to have a hard time preventing the Tigers from pr pressuring up to four or five Dragons, and that is a very dangerous position for CJ Entis to be in, so could've just let him have it, not cared about it, instead decided to give him the Dragon and a boatload of kills. Yeah, quite a bit. Now, Vayne does have that bit of the Ruined King, but it's not really going to matter if the Tigers never give Space a chance to do something. Body slam over the wall for Ambition as he almost gets caught. And there's a shield from Janna just barely keeping that Tier 1 alive in mid. The other thing about the Tigers is that sometimes they've been having problems hitting Power Spikes uh, this season. So seeing them be so decisive about that, because in a way, when, when CJ's sitting there and they, the Tigers had waited until that dragon was so low, CJ feels kind of committed to sticking around and finishing it out. And that's exactly the, the place where the Tigers and time that the Tigers want to fight. So you can abuse teams that way sometimes. Teams will 
mentally commit to an objective like that if it's below 50% and then have a hard time instantly giving it up. That's why you have to have very clear plans going to into any objective as a professional team. And you have to think about these situations where even if they come and we've nearly got this thing, you still just have to back off instantly because the odds of winning that fight are so low. Yeah, and that's not going to change for quite some time as the Tigers continue to have that item advantage. And it's going to keep growing if they can push down the other tier ones as Prey tries to shove in in the bottom lane. The tower's still pretty healthy here for CJ Entis. But we'll see if uh, Hojin and maybe even Kuro needs this red buff. <laughs> well, it's a quick steal for Cassiopeia. So that's just going to deny some experience and a nice buff for Ambition. Hey man, he needs that initiating factor. A little bit more CC. The form Gotta of get that autos. slow. <laughs> get that slow down. Well, Ambition. Not going to be too happy with what he finds right there. Just a couple of tiny little bramble backs and no buff to help him out with any future ganks he wants to go for. Kuro taking out the tower in the mid lane as well. That being taken down early and the ward being placed in the lane and now all over the bottom side of the jungle, clearing out the pink wards too. I mean, this is just heaven for Hojin as he can roam about and they can really pressure the flank and the dive onto the vein uh, if CJ just doesn't watch out. Here we go. No, well, here it comes right there. The condemn and space is going to be able to flash out a lot blown. Really going to take some towers. It's not going to matter. And that means CJ Antis passes one more turn to keep this tower alive, but here comes Hojin. I mean, they got a, they got a flash for free right there. That was great for the Tigers, just yeah. trading the Alistair ultimate for that. And now that space going to be extra vulnerable if Hojin wants to follow up on this dive. Obviously, Monsoon available, so that makes things a little bit riskier. Yeah, the dive there, of course, them seeing Madlife uh, near the blue buff side, trying to help clear or regain that vision. Prey taking a lot of damage from the silver bolts, but he'll be able to walk right out of Howling Gale range. Yeah, they're just continuing to push up right now, see what they can get. Prey a little bit chunked, but find out. Yeah, they're gonna find that they want to back out. But just given the timing, Space also was playing very aggressively. Coco missing from the mid lane. Now Ambition still trying to help gain some vision. He'll go ahead and clear out this pink board. And the vision has been going back and forth very steadily between the two teams. But the Tigers were the ones who took advantage of that dragon. And now CJ is grouping for this next dragon. And they're not even going to clear the war. They know that the Tigers know where they're going. I mean, everyone's been seen. Questionable dragon here again. Yeah, I mean, they seem they, they, really committed to this. They're also not controlling the chokes, and this is a great flank because CJ only has so much well, disengage. Shine there goes go. forward, and he does get the snare onto Kuro. Kuro gets a two-man stun with the gaze, but Coco not able to follow up, and now Space's ultimate has also been used, and there's a three-man knockup coming in from Gorilla, and the headbutt out onto Shy. Coco, Ambition all have to run away. Ambition eventually gets burned down. Space was caught by Hojin, and Coco just can't do enough from afar, and the coup Tigers get another three-man kill this time, and they'll quietly take the dragon. Coco needs to control the choke points, and the setup for that fight with the Ku Tigers as well, so good, because it forces CJ in those flank moments to decide where that disengage is going to go, because it can't go to everywhere, it can't go everywhere at once, particularly the Emperor's Divide. They try and commit to one flank uh, using the Twisted Advance in the Righteous Glory. Kuro, even though he doesn't have Cleanse, has that Seraph's Embrace, so he's able to use that and just squirm out of the gank in the end with a little bit of help from his own CC on his ultimate. But that was a huge commitment from CJ. And again, you use all that and you don't get the Cassiopeia, you have to go. Yeah. There's, there's nothing else you could do right there. Madlife didn't have a very good Monsoon either. Yeah, well, like you said, I think the Tigers are really just their positioning and the timing on when each player enters the fight has really kept CJ at bay and them not being able to take advantage of all their skills of being staggered in perfect succession to deny those fights for the Tigers. Well, CJ also just, I mean, they, they're, they've they been overcommitting to these dragons. <laughs> yeah, they so shouldn't have been there in the first place. There's the no, they are scared of the five dragon stacks, uh, and rightfully so, but 
they're not actually helping themselves win because the dragons are still going over to the tigers and they're just giving them a bunch of gold in the process as well. Yeah. Uh, so the tigers actually just turning that around to get extra advantages than just the dragons. And ambition showing up in mid lane and everyone kind of looking towards the bottom as Prey takes out the tier one and bottom. The only one left standing for CJ is in the top lane. Coco will still be able to secure this blue. But how many more will he get, especially as the Tigers continue to dominate the bottom side of the map? Yeah, so, at, th at this point, now that the Corky's strong enough to really shove in some of these waves, it's, it's becoming a pretty big disaster for CJ Entis. And there's another tower falling in favor of the Tigers. And CJ, this is, this is something that I wish we'd see more from teams, which is that just if you have a scaling composition and they want to do the dragon, just take the gold. Go over the turrets in the top side instead, or the mid. Take that edge, especially since you have an Azir who can just walk up into the top side and start spamming sand soldiers on a turret to kill it, and say, okay, you want to scale from this dragon, but we're going to be able to do a lot more with items as we are going to be the composition scaling harder with those items. Yeah, that would, you know, that's a fair trade-off. And even then, it's still going to be some time before you get the fifth stack, so you can try to deny that after you even out with the items um, right around the third or fourth stack of dragons. The red buff in contention here. I mean, CJ has to be a little scared. Potion's going to start showing up, too. They don't have any tier one, so they don't have vision in the lanes. Ambition might be caught out. Hojin's still looking for the flank. He's going to get spotted by Madlife. Shy going to come down just to push them out. The red buff revenge. Oh, Ambition staying around perhaps a little too long as the buff resets. Or Brambleback just being damaged time and time again. And it will go over to Hojin with the spike. Hojin will try to get a counter steal. Not going to find it, though. Yeah, definitely not going to get it in this particular game. And now... Here we go, moving forward into the mid lane. Oh, there's the body side, explosive cast. There's the snare onto Bray, but he's trying to get out with the heal. Space trying to catch up with the equalizer, slowed him down just enough. Now Hojin in the front, and Shai is trying to deny enough damage from Space, but they have to run away under the sun turret, and Kuro just charging forward, trying to get the kill onto Shai, and they'll help get it as Prey gets the last hit. Oh no, Kuro gets the hit onto the kill. Prey takes down the tower. And now just move right onto the Baron. Easy enough for the Koo Tigers. They have that outer ring of turrets down. They have all the towers in this game so far. CJ unable to put up much of a threat in terms of a siege. Wow. Baron goes over at 26 minutes. Tigers doing a beautiful job of closing this one. They're contesting every objective, every buff right now, just to force them. Look how much they use on Prey. If you're CJ, you cannot use these abilities to engage because you need them to save your teammates when this starts happening. Koro's just sitting there the entire time, DPSing down the entire team as they really overcommit to Prey. And then they have no more tools left to remove Kuro from that team fight. Yeah. Space also being distracted a little bit by Hojin, and that's what we talked about earlier. The Tigers really just swarming all over CJ Anches so they can't stay focused on one angle during fights. With that distraction space also getting cut off with the equalizer. Just really good understanding of what they need to do from the Tigers. Yeah. And oh, and there's a the flash, petrifying gaze, and he gets a lot of damage onto space. The poison is just gonna tick down. And space goes down with just one cycle of spells from Kuro. Look at the damage Kuro is doing, and there's the equalizer <laughs> not gonna find Coco. If it had hit, that would have been the kill for Smab. Not the best equalizer angle right there. <laughs> uh, even, uh, you're only really gonna get one tick if you put it down lengthwise like that, instead of shooting it back towards the fountain and hoping they have a little bit more time on it if they're trying to get away. But they're still going to poke him out, still going to get the inhibitor, and that leaves CJ to clear out some Baron-empowered minions. And they'll get it with the Azir and the Maokai, but the Tigers is now going all the way to the top lane. It's pushed out a little bit in favor of CJ, so CJ has some breathing room until the two Tigers show up with those empowered minions. Baron Buff will last for a little while longer. Shy getting blocked by these empowered minions, and he's just gonna take a lot of damage from this rumble as Hojin shows up, and Smep will get out. Coco going in onto Hojin, but Space just cannot go forward comfortably. There's the Emperor's Divide now from across the wall. Space trying to do damage, but Kuro shows up with a petrifying gaze, and there is the Monsoon just to keep Coco healed up over the poison. 
finally CJ gets the fight they want, where they can use all those disengage abilities to clog a choke point. But it's just way too late right now with a 14k gold uh -oh. lead. Ambition body slamming forward and gets the explosive cast on Kuro, but it's not far enough for space to catch up with new damage. Now Kuro is low on mana, so CJ trying to make advantage of that. And OG comes in nice equalizer coming in for Smev to cut that off, but space goes forward, gets one kill, but he'll just get taken out in a 2v1. Yeah, they kill Hojin, but Prey and Kuro all over space in that fight. And Kuro may not have a lot of mana, but he does have a decent amount of regen right now in order to just stay topped up enough to get a yeah. few more spells down and continue to burst down space. So everyone going to head back for the recall right now. CJ has to deal with super minions on the turret. They're not going to be able to do anything at all about this dragon. Nope. Yeah, it's just going to be the fourth stack going over to the tigers. and. The nightmare that CJ wanted to avoid is unfolding right before their eyes. And this reminds me a lot of their first game against KT, though, where KT got something like 30 kills on them in 30 minutes, but they still bounced back and won the series. In fact, they won game two very decisively and then a very close game three. But CJ, they seem to take a little bit, a little Whoa. while to wake up in some of these best of threes. I mean, they even lost the first game to Anarchy yeah, in the best of three. True. So they usually get it together as the series progresses, but they have a little bit of trouble warming up their engine early on, and they, they get dominated. But that said, they have a lot of mental fortitude. It doesn't seem to affect them that much to get crushed in the first game of the series. Yeah, but it is going to matter a lot for the Tigers who have been searching for that confidence again in the summer season, and this is a nice start to this match that it's definitely a little bit of a tough one on both sides. Yeah, the Tigers have snowballed as well. Unrelenting aggression after they got that advantage, willing to take every fight. That's what you have to do with this kind of composition against what CJ's throwing at you. You try and play passive, you don't feel like tower diving, then you just won't be able to close the game quick enough. Whoa, and Coco goes in a beautiful effort to buy back three men from the Tigers under tower, but the equalizer keeps CJ Entis at bay and space takes too much damage, goes down, ambitious gets a shutdown onto Prey, but only one man down from the Tigers as Gorilla comes in, gets the triple kill for Kuro, and that's going to be the game in favor of the Tigers. Great Azir play from Coco. It was Honestly, beautiful. It was a beautiful curve on the Sand Soldier engaged straight into the ultimate, but they're just too far behind right now. He had to do something to see if they could hold on. That wasn't enough in the end, and now the game will go over to the Tigers. And the Tigers kicking this off 24 to 4 kill score, 9 to 0 tower score as they lead the match 1 0 after the first set. Yeah, nicely played by them. They look more together than we've seen them previously this season, more decisive. Uh, praise positioning, which we talked about being one of the keys to this series early on, was much better in this game. Yeah, I would agree. And Kuro playing that Cassiopeia really well. And the Tigers really just taking advantage of CJ's mistakes very well too, especially after that first and second dragon. So I like the response too on that Azir play because the Tigers just commit to that fight immediately. As soon as that happens, Gorilla just all ins under the tower. So does Hojin with his ultimate. Yeah, the equalizer and the petrifying gaze. The equalizer was wild. so good. 